This is Jimmy. He works at a hospital. Jimmy is responsible for a lot of patients. One of his patients has VRE. Jimmy, don't you think you should put your patient into isolation? Wrong! What is isolation? Isolation is designed for patients who are infected with highly transmissible pathogens for which additional precautions are required to prevent the spread of infection throughout the hospital or clinics. Did you know there are five different types of isolation? Well, there are. Each type is designed for a specific method of transmission. Contact Contact isolation is used for patients with poorly controlled bodily fluids, respiratory secretions, or are infected with microorganisms that are transmitted by direct or indirect contact. Direct transmission involves skin-to-skin -skin contact and the physical transfer of microorganisms from a carrier to a susceptible host. This may occur in routine patient care activities. Indirect transmission involves contact between a susceptible person and a contaminated object such as instruments or other equipment that have not been properly cleaned or disinfected between patients. Modified Contact Modified contact isolation is used for patients with active Clostridium difficile diarrhea. C. diff is a bacteria which produces spores that are not reliably removed from the hands with waterless hand sanitizers. Therefore, all employees must wash their hands with soap and water prior to exiting the patient's room or after contact with a patient or equipment. Whoa there, Jimmy. That hand sanitizer won't kill those Clostridium difficile spores. Droplet Droplet isolation is used for patients who are infected with microorganisms that are transmitted by large particle respiratory droplets. Droplets are generated during coughing, sneezing, talking, and suctioning, and are deposited on the mucous membranes of the nose or mouth of a susceptible person. Airborne Airborne isolation is used for patients who are infected with microorganisms that are transmitted by small droplet nuclei that remain suspended in the air. As the nuclei disperse, they can be inhaled by a susceptible host. In contrast to other isolation categories, which protect the hospital environment from the patient, protective isolation prevents the spread of infection to immunocompromised patients, such as heart or lung transplant recipients. Jimmy, are you wearing the proper personal protective equipment? The type of PPE that should be used will vary based on the type of isolation that is in place. Gowns fully cover the area from the neck to the knees and the arms to the end of the wrists. To be used properly, gowns must be fastened behind the neck and the waist. Make sure your gloves extend to cover the wrist of the gown. To remove, grasp the outside with your other gloved hand and peel it off. Hold the removed glove in your other hand, then slide your fingers under the remaining glove at the wrist and peel off. Gowns and other PPE must be removed before leaving the patient's room. To remove the gown, unfasten the ties and pull it away from the neck and shoulders. Be sure to only touch the inside of the gown as the outside is contaminated. Turn the gown inside out, then fold or roll into a bundle and discard it in the proper place. Masks and respirators protect the wearer from airborne microorganisms. As such, they must be worn in patients' rooms who are under droplet or airborne isolation. Secure the ties or elastic bands behind the head and neck. Fit the mask or respirator snug to your face and below your chin. When removing, never touch the front of the mask or respirator as it has been contaminated. Grasp the bottom, then pull off the top ties. Jimmy is seeing a patient with suspected TB. He needs to use a PAPR or Powered Air Purifying Respirator. Goggles or face shields should also be worn while interacting with patients who are in droplet isolation. When finished using goggles or face shields, remove them by the head of the band or the earpieces and place them in the designated receptacle or waste container. 
Remember to use safe work practices to protect yourself and limit the spread of contamination. Using the appropriate isolation technique can save the lives of your patients and colleagues. Help do your part in keeping the hospital safe by following the isolation guidelines.